Seven Drunken Nights, the story of the Dubliners is back in theatres from March to May. Uh, the many venues can be viewed. Prestige Productions present a celebration of the music of the Dubliners in a career which spanned 50 years. Now I'm pleased to welcome back Jed Graham, who is the narrator and lead vocalist. Jed, lovely to talk to you once again. And it's lovely to be back on air with yourself, yeah. Uh, Jed, you were the, the, the right man to depict the history of the legendary Dubliners. As, a, as I remember rightly, you were, you, yourself, you were born in Dublin to a musical family later, uh, family, later moving to Manchester. That's correct, yeah. I was born in Dublin, right in the centre of Dublin, on the south side in the Liberties. Born in my grandmother's house in Watkins Square, just off the coo. And, uh, yeah, brought up in, um, yeah, as, as the song lyrics say, uh, raised on songs and stories. And, uh, yeah, when we came over in 1970 to England uh, and settled in Manchester. Yeah, so both brought up in Dublin for 10 years and then over over to Manchester for the rest of my life. Right. Now, now as we talked about before in a previous chat, you're, you're clearly mindful of the importance and the influence of the Dubliners in the history of Irish music and culture. And uh, your respect for the legacy is uh, apparent as shown by the, the avoidance of a, a tribute band style approach. Mm. Yes, I'm mean, very much so. I mean, when I, when I was looking for for bringing this project to life, uh, the thing I didn't want to do was to have a, a look alike, you sound alike, you dress a up alike, you kind of, kind of show. I think that kind of, in, to certain respects, sort of diminishes the 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 importance of a band like the Dubliners. I think all you can do is try to capture the spirit of their of their music and the, the intention of their songs as they perform them in you know in the sixties and seventies. So that's what I tried to do, really, just to capture the, the spirit of the Dubliners rather than uh, look alike and sound. Likes. Yeah, now theatre goers familiar with the Dubliners and those who uh, who just know the uh, the firm favourites will equally enjoy Seven Drunken Nights. Since you tell the story through the uh, the decades, there's uh, there's actually real footage of the lads uh, and uh, you belt out uh, all the the usual crowd uh, pleasers night after night. You you, you must love the audience uh, participation. It, I really do. I mean, you know, there's there's nothing better than a good Irish night out. I mean, that's, that's beyond ours. You know, we can see on St. Patrick's Day celebrated throughout the world. But what I find is that with, with the Dubliners songs is sometimes people don't realise that the Dubliners done all the classic songs, you know, from the Wild Rover, Black Velvet Band, Irish Rover, Dirty Old Town. It's it's almost the Irish songbook. And the people responsible for, for bringing that to to the general public was the Dubliners and uh, I think that's their importance and sometimes it gets sort of ignored on how important they were to to Irish culture and to Irish music and uh, I wanted to make sort of a bit of a statement to say no the you know they're as relevant today with bands like U2 or you know the script or you know uh, any of the the great Damien Dempsey any of the great uh, you know, Irish acts, they're still as relevant today and the influence is like a, almost like a stick of rock and the Dublin has run through the centre of that stick of rock. Indeed. Now, the, 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 the Dubliners, I mean, those, those classics you mentioned there, Jed, I mean, are regarded as uh, just classics now. But um, in their day, the, the Dubliners were trailblazers and they actually caused controversy because the full length version of Seven Drunken Nights was in fact banned uh, by RTE, which, uh, in fact, made it even more popular. It certainly did. I mean, you know, at the, at the time, there was just the one broadcaster in Ireland, which was, uh, you know, RTE. And uh, even though the song Seven Drunken Nights was performed on RTE for many years, but in, in, in the Irish language. So uh, when the Dubliners brought it out, it did cause a controversy. And, you know, if you looked at the Dubliners circa 1967, they were like these five hairy, bearded, you know, beatniks almost. And it was, it, you know, it, it rubbed the establishment establishment up the wrong way, you know, to a great extent. So when they got banned, uh, very quickly the single got picked up by Radio Caroline and the uh, the other uh, pirate radio stations and became a massive, massive hit, you know. And when you think they appeared on Top of the Pops in 1967, alongside people like, you know, Jimi Hendrix and the Kinks and the Beatles, you know, they were... They were the coolest Irish band, I think, of, of the 60s. Indeed. Now, our <laughs> listeners have, have turned out in huge numbers to see you and uh, no doubt will return uh, once you put together a, a cast of highly talented musicians. And uh, mm. the, the, the set is authentic with uh, the, the O'Donoghue's pub featuring in it. Yes, we do. I mean, we have, uh, you know, the, we've um, improved, we believe, the show from the tour this year. For, so we've got a brand new production for 2018. And we've uh, built a, a new set which recreates the interior of O'Donoghue's pub. So what we try and do is to, is to create a scene 
in which the music fits and then the, we invite the audience to come into that scene. So having the, the set of, of O'Donnell who's there is very important. And then we've also um, recreated a, a studio, a recording studio, circa, you know, 1967 through to about 1975. And, uh, you know, a lot of the activity within the show takes place there. So we have a lot of scene changes and a lot of movement within the show, which uh, brings, I think, the story of the Dubliners to life. Well, you know, Seven Drunken Nights is it's very much a, a feel-good show, but there are some poignant moments in it, as the, the band suffered losses indeed through uh, illness and deaths of uh, Kieran Burke and uh, Luke Kelly, and you, you you deal with that quite sensi- you know, with sensitivity. Well, we you know it's you know th- these guys are my heroes, you know, so uh, you know I really wanted to you know to make sure that we did deal with their passing in in a really sort of. Uh, in a gentle way and a respectful way. I mean, Kieran Burke, to a great extent, has been ignored, you know, in the history of of music. Well, Kieran was a, a you know, a huge member of the of the of the original Five Piece Dubliners, and he brought the Gaelic language songs, and he was a great instrumentalist and a very very intelligent man. Um, and his passing was, you know, was a dreadful time, as was Luke Kelly's, you know, and, and of course, Ronnie Drew and Jim McCann most recently and Barney McKenna. So we try to, you know, to honour these guys. These are really sort of, you know, if, if you had a huge mountain in Ireland, you could carve, you know, faces of the heroes of, of Ireland. I think the, you know, the Dubliners would be some of those heroes that be carved in stone as, as a memorial to, you know, how much influence and, and greatness they brought to, to being Irish. I mean, when we arrived in Ireland, uh, sorry, when we arrived from Ireland up in England in the 70s, you know, it wasn't a great time to be Irish um, with all the troubles over in, in Northern Ireland. But we, you know, we packed our bags and, you know, we got on the, the boat from, you know, Dunleary to Hollyhead and, we had our Dublin as albums, you know. We had the the records were there in as part of our possessions that we brought with us. So it was very important to us to to bring our Irish culture with us to to England. And when we settled in Manchester, it was a very vibrant Irish community. And you know, when the Dubliners arrived up to play at the Free Trade Hall or any of the other venues, there was thousands of people there, and it was thousands of people there because you could actually feel like you were amongst your own. So they're very very important to me personally. All right. Now, uh, those who uh, had the privilege of actually seeing the Dubliners in their heyday will love this revival, and those who never mm. uh, were never fortunate enough to see them will have a, a great night's entertainment. Oh yeah, I do hope so. I mean, you know, I saw the Dubliners first in 1974 at the uh, Free Trade Hall in Manchester, and uh, it blew me away. I was dragged along by my parents. It wasn't like you know I was a bit too cool for this Irish folk music. Uh, but when I heard Luke Kelly belting now and I heard Ronnie Drew's voice, it was like, wow, this is, you know, this is what I've been looking for. This is actually who I am. This is, this is it, they spoke directly to me as a, as a, as a young musician. And, uh, and they speak to young musicians even to this day. You hear Luke Kelly singing Score Not Simplicity and you tell me that is the most soulful. You know, he can stand alongside any of the great American soul singers with the amount of passion in his voice, you know. And you hear um, Ronnie Drew, you know, singing, you know, you know, just any of Ronnie Drew's songs. You know, it just, it's unique. It's a unique thing. And uh, as I say, very, very important to me. Indeed, and uh, you've you've more dates than ever, including in in the West End on the 11th of March at the Leicester Square Theatre. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, to play the West End, uh, it's always been a dream of mine. I've done lots of theatre shows over the last sort of twenty odd years, and it's always a, an actor and you know, a musical theatre musicians' ambition to play the West End, and I get to do that with Seven Drunken Nights, which is like it's a double whammy for me. Uh, so I get to you know to play the West End and play. The West End singing some of my absolute favourite songs, so I'm really looking forward to that. Now, we reviewed Seven Drunken Nights when you appeared at the uh, Beck and Hayes and recommended mm. to uh, to anybody who hasn't yet caught the show. Now, for those who have, you've uh, but you've been working on new material to keep it fresh. For those who uh, who'd like to see you again, how have you enhanced the production even further? Right. Well, what we've done, you know, I, one of the things that was always at the back of my mind is that we never really p- paid the proper tribute to Jim McCann. So I put a new Jim McCann section in in, in Act Two, and um, it, so we got a few new songs going in there. Um, and one of the musicians, Paddy Paddy Ryan, 
He was the banjo player. Uh, he's got a great voice, and I wanted to include Paddy there on vocals. So now we've we put him into another couple of numbers, and he's singing a couple of new songs within the show. And because there's there's such a, a, a depth of of material. We do always have that unique situation being able to take songs in and out of the show. It's like one of those shows is what songs do you leave out? That's the difficulty, yeah. you know? So, uh, we, yeah, we've taken a few songs out and put a new, a few new songs in, put a couple of new sections in. I so said we've enhanced the studio uh, scene and we've enhanced the O'Donoghue scene. And uh, we're putting two original pieces of music in, uh, which is one called The Dubliners, which is actually going to be the finale of the show which is a, a brand new song written especially for Seven Drunken Nights. Right, excellent. Now, uh, Jed, you've uh, you've a lot of dates. You clearly enjoy being on the road and taking the show to audiences uh, far and wide. Now, the meet and greet with the cast at the end is uh, very popular and you give everybody mm. plenty of time for photos, CD signings, etc. Do you enjoy engaging with uh, those who, who go along to the shows? Yeah, it's, it's one of the most important parts of, uh, of the evening for me. You know, uh, you know, people have spent time and money and effort to get dressed up and come out for, for a night out. And the least that we can do is come out and say, you know, thanks for coming along. And, uh, the, you know, we share stories and, you know, we have a great old time. And then Billy, who is, uh, you know, the oldest cast member, I'm glad to say. I've always been the oldest cast member in shows. But Billy is, uh, he, he won't tell us his age. And that's one of the things <laughs> within the show. Uh, his age range is from 69 to 84. And I've noticed somewhere in between that age, but to, Billy uh, just loves meeting people, and we were usually locking the theatre up and putting the bins out by the time we can get Billy out of his dressing room, you know. So it, it's a great pleasure to meet all the people who take the time and effort to come and see us. Excellent. Now, tickets will be a great Christmas present. A good night out is always something to look forward to, Jed. Uh, you can guarantee that uh, because you and the band are, are clearly having a great time on stage, uh, have a passion for the music of the Dubliners, and it sort of it becomes infectious. Uh, tickets are on sale now for Seven Drunken Nights. The story of the Dubliners through the website www.sevendrunkennights.com. Now, there's a link on our website, irishradio.org. Jed, you open at the Hexagon Reading on the 8th of March and you'll tour until the 6th of May. We'll, That's we'll, right. Yeah, we'll speak to you again before the opening night to see how rehearsals are going. And, uh, and uh, thanks indeed for the ticket giveaways, CDs and DVDs, which will be rolling out to listeners in the, in the weeks as, ahead. As always, been, it's been a special pleasure to, uh, to speak to you, Jed. Oh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to speak to me. It's, it's always a pleasure speaking to you guys. A real pleasure, and uh, this is a little snippet of what you can expect at Seven Drunken Nights. Oh, oh.